Well, good morning. It's good to be with you this morning on the 8th of March, 2023. What an incredible Sunday we had listening to Gary and Faith Mackay share with us about the ministry that they have to the coal people in P&G. As we listen to them sharing through video and and everything, I was taken back to when we first took that ministry on to support them financially as a church. And Gary told me the other day, he said, you guys have been one of our, our most faithful supporters and we're, we're very thankful for that. And and so we're, I'm, I'm so glad that we've been able to do that because we remember when they went to the tribe and they were just, they were um, a tribe that didn't know anything about the gospel or about God. And, and Gary and Faith spent the time it took several years to encode their language and to translate the word of God and translate the, the gospel message and the stories to tell uh, to the people. And then they presented the gospel and God brought people to faith and they started the church. I mean, it's just been an amazing journey for the 22 years that, that they've been there so far. And of course, what an unusual way to hear about what's going on, them sharing with us their everyday life. And I know there were some confronting pictures, <laughs> some of the medical challenges that they have and and some of the creatures that they had to, to put up with coming into their home and, and all of that. And I know that that's been a, wow, just a quite, quite confronting to watch, but just the casual way that they um, handled those things. It, it helps us to realize what an amazing commitment that these, this couple has had, well, their entire family, their, their kids as well, as we saw. And they are truly some of God's special people and, and missionaries. And I think it's important for us to, to not just take from what their ministry was, but also to understand God's purpose in asking people to do something like they have done and to commit themselves to that kind of life and ministry over a period of, of 20 something years. And so we want to focus this morning on what God has asked us to do in terms of, of reaching the world for Christ. And we're going to do that by starting at the end of the story. I read a little bit of the passage of Re Revelation chapter 5 on Sunday morning at the end of the service as we were finishing. And I want to go back to that passage and, and read to you what's taking place. This is the vision of the Apostle John as he's on the Isle of Patmos and what he sees at the end of, of, of days. And this vision has some wonderful illustrations of some truth for us. It's Revelation chapter 5. We'll begin reading from verse 1. Then I saw in the right hand of him who was seated on the throne a scroll written within and on the back sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? And no one in heaven and on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look into it. And I began to weep loudly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look into it. And one of the elders said to me, Weep no more. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. And between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders, I saw a lamb standing as though it had been slain with seven horns and with seven eyes and which were the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. And he went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who was seated on the throne. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense which are the prayers of the saints. This amazing vision that John is seeing where 
they come to the to the end of times and there's this scroll to be open and no one was worthy to open it and to be able to to understand and read what was there one of those planes coming over I think the remnants of the air show but so this incredible vision is happening and we we see this song that they began to sing as the lamb Jesus the one that is come to take away the sin of the world which John the Baptist identified Jesus as as he came to to see John down at as he was baptized him he said behold the lamb of god who takes away the sin of the world and that imagery is continued on here in this passage and this lamb who was slain takes the scroll and they began to sing a song and listen to what the song says and they sang a new song saying worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals for you were slain and by your blood you ransomed people for god from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you have made them a kingdom and priests to our God, and they shall reign on the earth. This is a, a wonderful telling of God's great redemption plan, sending his son Jesus, the Lamb of God, into the world to ransom people from every people group on the earth tribe and language and people and nation and what an amazing vision that is that God sent his son Jesus to to win and to ransom all of those people to himself he goes on and finishes and I have to finish it because it's so powerful then I looked and heard around the throne and the living creatures and the elders and the voice of many angels numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing and I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them saying to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the, angel, and the elders fell down and worshipped. What a powerful picture this is, this vision that John was given of all of the people gathered around the throne of God, praising him and around the lamb who was slain, the Lord Jesus Christ, as he is worshiped and honored for the work that he did, singing praise to his holy name and singing worthy is the lamb. That's a wonderful thought and vision for us to imagine as we think about the future. But it also reminds us of an unfinished task which Jesus left for us to accomplish with our lives and our influence. Taking the gospel to those tribes and language groups and people groups and nations. As we do that, we're going to look at Matthew 28 where he sends us out to go and make disciples of all nations. We're going to look at that passage on Sunday morning and we'll come unpack that command and commission of Jesus. But before we do that, I want us to see a little bit more into the heart of Jesus. And we're going to do that by looking at a passage earlier in Matthew, Matthew chapter 9. Listen to what it says. Jesus was in his, his ministry with his disciples. Listen to what it says in Matthew 9, 35. And Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. So here we have this situation of Jesus traveling around and great crowds of people coming to follow him. And as he did that, 
they were clamoring to get to him and, and many were seeking healing and, and he, they were listening to his amazing teaching. And as Jesus saw them, his heart swelled within him with compassion and empathy for these people who were so lost, like sheep without a shepherd, just wandering around. And he looked at his disciples and he said to them, the harvest is plentiful. There's plenty of people out here who need the gospel of the kingdom. They need to hear the message of, of my redemption that I'm bringing to the earth. But there's not enough laborers. There's not enough people to go out and bring in that harvest. And as Jesus said that, he then gave them a challenge. He said, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. See, this harvest belongs to God. We are just simply the helpers, the laborers to go out and help to bring that harvest in. As Tammy and I were many, many years ago going around and raising support to be able to come to Australia and start a church and we were in lots of missions conferences, we heard a lot of messages and, and sermons that people preached about going out and, and quite often there was this three-pronged challenge that, that was given in these churches and by some of these veteran missionaries like Gary and Faith and it was pray, give, and go. So let's take those three things for a moment. Jesus said, pray to the Lord of the harvest. Who's the Lord of the harvest? Well, God himself, of course, is the Lord of the harvest. He's the one that has provided a way through sending Jesus into the harvest field and has provided the opportunity for those people to come and be redeemed, to be ransomed from the place of sin. And he said, pray the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers. Now there's a caution, because if you begin to pray that God would send laborers into the harvest, one of the things that he may do is tap you on the shoulder and say, how about you? Are you willing to go? Are you willing to give your life into this kind of service? The second thing that we hear about and know about is this idea of giving. And because people can't go unless someone provides the resources for them to be able to do that. And we're very blessed that we had churches in the U.S. that, that funded the ministry that we were coming here to do and we were able to come and plant a church and, and be resourced until the church was strong enough and big enough to be able to take our support and, and then we we went back to those churches and said, thank you for what you've done. And we were able to, to, the church here was able to take our support. So the giving part of it is very important. And then the third thing is the go. And there's several ways we can look at this. Maybe God might want to send us to a place like uh, the coal people, uh, an area like Oro in Papua New Guinea on East New Britain. And maybe he wants us to do something like Gary and Faith. And in many ways, the, the language groups, the tribes, the nations, the peoples, many of them have come into modern cities. It may not be that we need to go to a tribe out in the jungle, but we may need to go to a city and take the gospel to those people. Whatever the case, God wants us to go. And if it's going to our neighbors, going to the people in our city, going to our country and nation. And in many ways in Wyndham, God is bringing the tribes and tongues and peoples and nations right here in our very backyard. So I want you to think about those three things as we finish today. Pray, pray for God to raise up laborers. Give, make sure you are giving to, to enable others to go and go yourself. Take the gospel to those. We're going to talk more about this on Sunday and this commission that we have from the Lord Jesus. But what a powerful thing we saw on Sunday morning as we seen a, a, a couple in action doing the exact thing that Jesus said that we're to do. So I would encourage you, pray, 
give and go. Let me pray for us. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your blessing and goodness. Thank you for the opportunity to look at these things again this morning. Use this passage and the the testimony of Gary and Faith to speak powerfully into our lives and to encourage us to pray that laborers might come to give and to go. Thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do for us. Take us through the rest of our week. Bless and guide us as we do ministry for you. And we just want to thank you for all that you're going to do for us in these days. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless. We'll see you on Sunday morning.